If you came here to get an idea on how to repair the tension bolt on your scroll saw, don't panic. You don't need to disassemble it to this point. Sometimes I get a little carried away. Ultimately, it's that bolt that we're after. We're going to try and fix that. Before we get started, though, I'm going to put this saw back together a little bit and try and find a good starting point. Okay, so I've put a few of those pieces back in place on this scroll saw. And I think this is a point, if you can get to this, we should be able to get this tension bar out from these arms. What I've got going at this point is the four bolts that hold the arm to the base are really loose. The nut is still on the bolt, but what that does is that allows me to lift up these arms and I can slide off this cover here. The other thing I've done is on the front I've removed the bolt that secures the table to the base also the wing nut that allows you to tilt the table. The tension bar is held by these brackets which are held to the arms by a couple of screws. All we need to do is get these arms out far enough away from this outer case to get a screwdriver in here. So you may have to push on these pivot points from the other side, slide things around just a little bit. But you don't have to do anything more than just get yourself enough clearance to get a screwdriver in there. All I've done is loosen those little bolts up enough to allow me to remove this tension bar. Now we can try and figure out a way to fix this mess. Before we fix this, let's take a look at this to see what the problem is. First thing to note is this is a really fine thread and it's actually a reverse or left-handed thread. And I think that is so that when you move it, it stays consistent with clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to loosen, or lefty loosey righty tighty. The bottom is free, so that spins, and as you turn the handle, this is stationary in the arm, and essentially what it's doing is it's tightening or loosening and pulling these two triangular wedges together or separating them. But you can see right here that the threads are just stripped out. The threads are still good in this triangular wedge piece here. I'm not going to be able to replicate this reverse thread and I'm not going to go find a new bolt here. So we're going to create our own. The direction to tighten and loosen is going to be reversed because we're going to have a normal thread in there. So let's drill out the non-threaded triangle piece. That corresponds to this end of the bolt. Now on this threaded piece here, we're going to re-tap that. And I think I've got just enough material that I can get a good thread to take. I won't really know until I drill this out, tap it, and see how it feels. So we're just going to start by drilling this. Put this in here and see what we've got. Yeah, I think that's going to work just fine. So I'm going to try and use this old knob. And as far as I can tell, this has a roll pin in there that holds the 
upper part of that old bolt. So you can either try and drive this out, but I think I'm just going to try and drill this out and see if I can get the rest of that bolt to pull out. Now this knob actually has a threaded collar in there, so I'm going to have to drill that out and try and tap it for the correct threads. On the free end of the new rod, what I've done is I welded a nut on here and then I just went to the bench grinder and rounded that off so that it kind of mimics that little button appearance. You could use a file to do the same thing. Now if you don't have a welder, one option is to put a lock nut on there and you could even kind of back it up with some super glue or five minute epoxy or even some thread locker and then you could also take that and round that down as well. Now really the only thing left to do is cut this new rod to length. Now to make this easier, because when you cut these, sometimes the ends of the threads will get buggered up. So I like to run a nut on there past where I'm going to cut and then essentially when I remove this nut it kind of cleans up the threads for me. And you can cut this off with a hacksaw. I'm going to use my angle grinder. So the last step is to put that pin in here, which is just a cut off nail. Before you do that, before you lock that knob in place, make sure you've got all your parts in. not liking what this is doing here so I'm going to cut that a little bit shorter before I finish this up. When I reassemble this I'm going to add some grease to some of these moving parts. You probably noticed when you pulled yours apart that there's grease already back here where these triangle wedges fit and so I'm just going to add some more I'm also going to add some new grease to these pins.
since I can get to them. And to the sleeves, tops, bottom, both sides.